The fighting aircraft of the RAF fly in many different roles, using a wide variety of guns, bombs, rockets and missiles. From handling and storing weapons to servicing ejector seats, the safety of the aircraft and the pilot's life itself depend on the skill with which the armourer does his job. The responsibilities which the armourer must be prepared to accept as part of his service career require a high level of training and for direct entrance this starts at the RAF Technical School at Horton. Just like its civilian counterparts, the Polytechnics and Sixth Form Colleges, Halton provides specialised further education in its most concentrated form. The Weapons Fitters course is designed with the special requirements of the RAF very much in mind, but much of the extra knowledge and skill which students learn at Halton has a parallel in civilian engineering apprenticeships. Excuse me, sir, we seem to have a problem here. Our ball is Just take your meter probe off. Training is done in a very controlled way in the RAF. It's all well scheduled. Whereas in a civilian job, it's uh, a little bit PC. But in the Air Force, you can see what you're building up to all the time. At Holton, we try to cover basic engineering skills. Um, it's necessary to instill a certain amount of mechanical ability into a person before he can actually work in any trade in the RAF, because so much involves the use of mechanical equipment. In almost all trades in the RAF, the skills that you acquire are useful in civilian jobs. These days, an apprenticeship in an engineering firm is probably not so easily acquired as the training that is available in the Air Force. Well, the instructors um, in the first class, really, you're treated like an adult. You're told to express your views if you had any, intelligent views, that is. Well, I would think that the difference between being an armourer a few years ago and now is that it's more technical and the electronics plays a much greater part in it than it used to. The most jobs that armourers have got to do now, if not all electrics, have, uh, are connected with electrics. Well, we traced it through the circuit diagram and uh, we've narrowed it down to the contacts TB12, 6 and 7. We think there's a short between the two. I see. Okay, very good. The nine-month course at Halton is designed to turn promising students into the kind of highly skilled technician that the modern RAF must have in order to do its job effectively. Fine, okay. But it also introduces people to some of the spare time benefits which service life offers. The opportunity to do your own thing, whatever it is. Gliding, for example. It's just incredible the way they do it in the Royal Air Force, and they give you training from you not even having seen a glider before, right through to take all your certificates and different badges and things. Every operational air station has its complement of armourers. On leaving Horton, they are given the rank of junior technician and are posted wherever the RAF has need of them, at home and overseas. It is now that their training and newfound skills are put into practice and they find themselves face to face with a new generation of service weaponry, such as the Sparrow air-to-air -air missile. Well, the Sparrow missile, which is fitted to the, uh, the British Phantom, has a pulse radar fired towards the target the uh, signal is picked up by the missile and homes in on the target aircraft. If and when, the event of war, if they were actually uh, split down to the basic components, it would take far too long to build them up and issue them to the uh, squadrons. So we have them what we call ready use storage and they're already on trolleys, ready to be towed out to the aircraft for loading up. The Harrier, designed and built in Britain, is primarily used by the RAF for low-level attack. Its weapon complement is different from that of the Phantom. It is armed with Aden automatic guns and high-explosive rockets carried in launcher pods. The complex circuitry of the launcher is checked on a test set by a junior technician. Because the Harrier is a close support aircraft, the launcher 
and the aircraft go together very well with HE heads. It only needs to fire off about three or four on something like a tank target to absolutely demolish it. Whereas on a building it can fire off the complete lot and totally demolish that. It's up to the pilot how many fires off. Electrics is becoming a uh, thing in the future. But um, the mechanical side of it still got a lot to do with it. Uh, the gun, although it's electrically uh, fired, it's still very much a mechanical piece of equipment. The aircraft generally to be successful have to make high speed low level attacks. Therefore the weapons have been modified to withstand higher temperatures and uh, their firing has to be more precise, more accurate. Perfect reliability is vital to the success of an aircraft mission. If it reaches its target and its weapons fail to fire, it might just as well have stayed on the ground. The meticulous care with which an armorer carries out his job, whether testing the circuitry on a rocket launcher, servicing an automatic gun, or reassembling the pieces of a bomb release mechanism, has a direct bearing on whether the pilot, the man who pulls the trigger, succeeds or fails. The armorer's sense of responsibility becomes even more vital when he is servicing the ejector seat with which all fighters are fitted. If that fails, what is at stake? Well, the pilot's life, or an aircrew life. If the seat doesn't work, he doesn't get out. No, it would be impossible for him to, as in the old days, bail out literally by jumping over the side, purely for the fact of speed and uh, g-forces and all this involved. The way the seat works is basically it's worked on a series of time explosions which ejects the seat from the aircraft upon which the parachute deploys and the pilot returns to the earth alive. The one link relies on all the rest being in place. There's no point in having uh, my part working and somebody else is not. So it's, it's all got to be 100%. That's it. Well, I feel it's a very responsible job and you have somebody's life in your hands and it all relies on you and the teammates doing their job correctly to the end of a successful ejection. The job of an armourer divides itself neatly into two basic areas. Second line servicing, which is normally done in a workshop or hangar, involves the maintenance and testing of all the weapons up to the point when they are declared ready to be fitted to an operational aircraft. With first flight servicing, armourers are in direct contact with the aircraft itself and form a vital part of the ground crew, which services the aircraft in its operational role. Their job is to have the weapons at instant readiness so that when the aircraft returns for fuel and fresh armament, rearming takes only a matter of minutes. An OTR is an operational turnaround. This is work carried out when an aircraft lands after flying a sortie to rearm it replenish the fuel and carry out a very brief but thorough check on the working parts of the aircraft to ensure that it is serviceable. The last job in an operational turndown is the removal of the safety pins from the pilot's ejector seat. But in 10 minutes, the Phantom has been fully rearmed and is ready to go back into action.
Phantom, Britain's number one fighter interceptor, has to operate from conventional airfields. But there are occasions when the need for strategic mobility means that the RAF and its armourers are faced with more difficult working conditions. Well, I think if, if you come into the RAF to do any sort of a trade, you've got to be prepared to put up with anything. It's a challenge, and the more of a challenge there is, the more interest you can get from your work. The Harrier does not always need the luxury of a runway. Its ability to take off and land vertically means that it can be rearmed wherever it happens to be, provided that the weapons and the armourers can get there too. Well, it's necessary under operational conditions to arm and rearm Harriers in hides to protect them from the enemy, basically. They, their main effect, being a vertical takeoff aircraft, is that they can be at the front lines of any battle, which means that they are very close to the enemy and would therefore come under heavy attack if they were that visible. And if they're in a, a battle situation, then it's necessary to rearm, refuel very quickly to get them back in the fighting role. With being an armourer, there's so many different types of equipment that you can adapt yourself quite easily to anything else that comes along. It's a, a feeling that all armourers have that you're in the sharp end. Mm -hmm. 